Hey everybody, it's Chuck Barone. Wednesday, September the 13th, 2023, CPI day. And man, what? When you think things can't get any crazier, when you think that, you know, every day you wake up like, am I in the twilight zone? Today is a day that is a twilight zone day. We'll get into all that in a second. Before we roll though, let me welcome everybody to the show. And as always, thank you guys for your support. You guys showing up and watching these videos, doing the things you do for us every day. It keeps us rolling here and we appreciate you guys. We do. All right, so let's talk about these markets today. So we knew CPI was coming out. It's the event of the day, man. And uh, in my opinion, the numbers were really, really, really crappy. Crappy. You had 3.7% top line inflation, 4.3% core inflation. And yet, and yet, the markets want to shrug this off, spin it into somehow this is something good or not bad at least. And uh, here's these markets today. So the stock market mixed today. The Dow kind of getting the message, dropping 70 points. But that's really a drop in the bucket. 34,000 still, 575 on the Dow. The S&P actually gains today, up five points. Another drop in the bucket, 4,467 on the S&P. And the NASDAQ gains 39 points. So the NASDAQ at 13,813. Well, really? If, I'm, if I had a big stock portfolio today, I'd be hedging like crazy. Bond market. Well, go figure. Bond yields down today. Bonds climbing. So the 10-year falls just one basis point, but 4.25% on a 10-year. The two-year falls three basis points, now sitting at 4.98%. What do you make of that, guys? Terrible inflation numbers. And uh, bond market rallies. Hmm, okay. Dollar today, up very small, but still super strong. 104.76 on the index. Near, zeroing in may break above and hold 105, we'll see. Strong dollar, you know, of course, the dollar being buoyed by the idea of higher, longer rates. As a result of a tough dollar, metals down today. Gold down $4.60, 1,908.20 for an ounce of gold. Silver down 24 cents today, $22.81 for an ounce of silver. Big pressure on metals with uh, the dollar being where it is, plus a whole bunch of other factors, but tough market right now. Still holding up, still decent numbers, but, you know, let's just say the trend is not looking super positive right now. But, you know, this dollar, how, how, how long can it stay here? We'll see. Oil today. Well, another not much of a day for oil, down just seven cents per barrel, sitting at $88.77 for a barrel of West Texas Intermediate. Not much action in the oil market today there. And I got to say, well, we're going to talk about oil a little later on the show. Bitcoin today, up very small, up $82.98, sitting at $26,174.27. So Bitcoin holding its own plodding along. These markets today really kind of not much. Not much in these markets today. I think the market trying to digest this CPI number. Um, again, just so everybody got it clear. CPI, top line, 3.7%. Jumping 0.6% in just one month. Boom. Now they were expecting 3.6%. That's up from 3.2 last month. Core, 4.3%. <sighs> Horrible numbers, trending in the wrong directions. As always, the markets, the spin meisters, the TV people, 
trying to spin this into some kind of good news. Um, making it like, well, you know, we were at 9, and now we're only at, you know, 3.7. Well, you know, that's in addition to the 9, guys. Because we're up 3.7 from a year ago, where prices were already up however much. So, uh, not good. Not good. No matter what they try to tell you guys, okay? Please, analysts, just tell people the friggin' truth. And cut the crap with this bullshit. You had 3% inflation, top line inflation in June. 3.2% in July. And I was saying then that was a shit number. Now you get 37 in August. Am I the only one that notices that there's some kind of trend developing here? Let's just say inflation, we can say, inflation is going in the wrong direction. And they want to blame it. Oh, it's a temporary spike in gasoline prices. It's a, you know what, guys? Gas prices did jump 10% in one month, more than 10%. But why on earth would you want to exclude something that all of us, every single one of us, use every single day? But this is the, the logic here, okay? Um, you know, I've always said, guys, you can work your ass off every single day, polishing, 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 but you can't turn a turd into a gold bar. And that's what they're trying to do with these numbers. That's what I'm saying here. I mean, 3.0 to 3.2 to 3.7. Okay. The market, 97%, the market says, probability that the Fed will not raise interest rates next week. My question is, why? Really? Who are you? Really? Why not? If, in, if inflation is going the wrong way, and they've tried to pause, and they see it's not working, why would they pause again? Now, I understand it's the government, okay? And I understand they're always going to try to find a way to do the wrong thing, okay? But, uh, you know, why on earth would you wait? What do you need? Inflation at four, four and a half before you raise rates? Why not try and get in front of that? If you're going to raise anyway, why wait? So I'm, you know... The market may be 97% certain that the Federal Reserve is not going to raise rates. I would say my percentage of certainty as for that is significantly less. I mean, now tomorrow we'll get the PPI number. And I always tell you guys, pay attention. PPI foreshadows future CPI. Right? The CPI, Consumer Price Index, that reflects prices when you buy at retail at the store. Okay? PPI, Producer Price Index, that's wholesale prices. That's the cost to create and sell. Okay? If those costs go up, that's the cost of materials, the cost of transportation to deliver product or ship it, the cost of energy, Bottom line, costs go up, PPI goes up, that cost doesn't get absorbed, it gets passed along and shows up down the road in CPI. Pretty logical progression, right? And then, of course, when it gets to CPI, because of all the middlemen in between, usually it reflects higher than what the PPI would show, right? So all this happy talk, all this soft landing, all this we're winning this fight, this, I was reading today, Goldman Sachs says the recession coming, the Fed will pivot by the end of the year. So now we're back to pivot. I call bullshit. The recession is what the Fed wants. You understand? And I've said it a thousand times and a million times. Raising interest rates does not bring down inflation, does not bring down prices. Raising interest rates 
puts a wet blanket on demand, which usually then, when I say usually, always, means a recession coming. The recession then reduces demand. So, you know, supply demand, right? When demand goes down, prices usually go down with it to attract demand. So, I tell you guys, it's going to be fascinating to see how all of this plays out. But I tell you, these rosy scenarios, they all want to play out. I'm just, I got trouble buying it. I do. It's like, you know, they want to encourage everybody to lose money, man. To do the wrong things here. The things we've been telling you guys since we started this show. You're doing those things. You're living good right now. This is none of this stuff's really a big concern of yours. Of course, everybody hates paying higher prices at the grocery store, the gas pump. Man, I had to pay $4.69 for gas the other day, man. It made me ill. But, you know, I can deal with that because I don't have any other payments to make. No, you know, there's no credit cards. There's no car payments. There's no other bullshit. And it's a good way to live because when times get tough like this, I'll tell you, if you're in the real estate business, mortgage, you understand what I'm saying. Um, you can certainly ride those tough times out a lot easier than if you were saddled with a bunch of debt. Anyway, the CPI numbers sucked. Tomorrow we'll be here to talk about PPI. I can't, I'll be up at 5.30 a.m. Pacific time to watch that. I can't wait. Plus, we'll get unemployment numbers tomorrow, too. It's going to be a big day tomorrow, guys. One more thing. I was reading this article today. U.S. oil reserves, you know our strategic petroleum reserve, now sitting at a 40-year, 40 40-year 40 low. The Biden administration trying to keep oil prices down, especially when the war started over there with Russia and Ukraine, has released... 180 million barrels since the Russian invasion to kind of cushion the blow and keep prices down. That's not working out so great, but whatever. So now the Strategic Petroleum Reserve sitting at less than 50% of the record high of 2010. Not a good thing right now with oil prices at $88. Now, Biden has promised to refill the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. Really? How are you going to do that? You're going to add 180 million barrels of demand onto the oil market and expect prices to do what? I mean, come on. If you're going to sell oil and it's going to bring prices down, when you go and rebuy that oil, what do you think it's going to do to prices? And how does that work with what the Fed's trying to do on inflation? I mean, the government, you know, there's the Fed can only deal with what they can deal with, monetary policy. The government, you know, the friggin' the geniuses in Washington, the government. They're the other part of it. They're the fiscal part. And they are doing everything to pull the Fed off course. Fed's trying to keep rates con consistent with what they want. At the same time, you got the U.S. Treasury in the bond market buying bonds like they need every last dollar out of that bond market. Now you're going to have the U.S buying oil as oil spiking, buying bonds as rates are spiking. I mean, you can't make this up. So, today not a happy day, again, but just the craziest, craziest stuff going on here. I don't know, man. And we're going to have to certainly have another look at our oil, uh, what we're thinking about oil prices over here. Um, I don't know. Anyway, that's it for the day. I'm already babbling and running over. We'll be back again tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be a huge day, guys. PPI, unemployment, consumer data, a whole bunch of stuff. We're going to be here to bring you the news you need. 
As always, we thank you for your support. If you like what you're hearing, please hit the like button, ask your questions, and make your comments in the comments section. We'll be back tomorrow to bring you guys the news you need. We appreciate you guys. Till tomorrow, take care. Thanks.